The Runza restaurant is a failure. But not that kind of failure. Since its creation, the business has failed to have a national appeal, but they have managed to conquer Nebraska and did it with style. The story of this restaurant isn't complete without talking about its signature sandwich, Runza. Some Nebraskans describe Runza the food as Nebraskan as Cornhusker football, but it is not a Nebraskan sandwich. Heck, it's not even American. The sandwich, known as Runza if you are Nebraskan or B-Rock if you are from Kansas, is a bread pocket that contains onions, sauerkraut or cabbages, beef, and seasonings of the baker's choice. The dough pocket comes in various shapes. In Nebraska, Runza the restaurant makes the dough in a rectangular form with a helping of seasoned meat and veggie filling. In Kansas, the sandwich comes in the shape of a bun. The sandwich Nebraskans, Kansas, and some other Midwestern states know and love came from Europe, specifically from the German Russians. The German Russians were the Germans that listened to the plea of Catherine the Great, who married into the Russian monarchy. But as common with monarchy weddings, Catherine's husband, the king, didn't love her. He preferred to spend his time with his mistress. The king humiliated the queen at every opportunity he got and tried to end their marriage to wed his mistress. But Catherine knew the game the king was playing, and when the opportunity came, she overthrew him. As the queen, she needed loyal subjects and opened the borders of Russia to her German kin, people from Scandinavian regions, and the Netherlands. The queen promised them fascinating things and special privileges. They settled along the Volga and established colonies. The population grew, and they enjoyed what the queen pledged to them. However, their peace didn't last for long. Catherine's grandson, Alexandra, went back on his grandmother's promise. He wanted to withdraw these people's privileges and assimilate them into Russia. These people didn't want to lose their identity and chose to leave instead. They sent some of their people to the United States, and they made a discovery. The people came back and suggested that Nebraska was an excellent settling place. Their choice was because of Nebraska's grassy plains, which was similar to what they were used to. And so, between around 1880 to 1920, these people slowly left Russia for America, and they brought their recipes with them. Some German-Russian people went to Kansas, where their B-Rocks became a staple lunch meal for field workers before they got general acceptability. While some German-Russians went to Kansas, others, including Alex Brenning Sr., left Popovko Saratov in Russia and arrived in New York in 1907 with his brother. Subsequently, he moved to Sutton, Nebraska, where he and his wife, Katerina, worked as farmers in Moments Township in Fillmore County, east of Sutton. His daughter, Sarah Sally Edna Everest Knee Brenning, was born in 1912, and she got married to Wilbert T. Everett and moved to Lincoln, Nebraska. Sally had a talent. She was good at making the sandwich and decided to make more out of her skill. In 1949, Sally partnered with her brother Alex Brenning Jr. and created the first Runza store, which was located in 1950 at 2600 Park Road in Lincoln, Nebraska. The first store was a drive-in, with their servers going about attending to customers on roller skates. The brother and sister continued to work together until Donald Everett Sr., Sally's son, joined the business in 1964. The store continued to thrive and do well and another restaurant opened at 56th and Holdridge in northeast of Lincoln. That same year, Donald bought the business name and registered the store as Runza Restaurants. The company steadily operated and only began to franchise in 1979. Even when it started to franchise, the company was still patient. They didn't go on a franchise-selling spree like some companies have done. Maybe Donald thought going on a massive expansion drive would eventually hurt the business. Although the company chose the slow approach to franchising, it did advertisements on television. And it was after its first TV ad that sales skyrocketed. A large number of people owning TVs was a positive for the business, as it meant that its ads would become even more widespread. However, this didn't prevent the company from changing some key parts of its operation. It looks like it even motivated it. And if you like to learn about the history of your favorite eateries, be sure to subscribe for more content like this. In 1980, the company changed from drive-ins to drive throughs in most locations. Speaking of locations, the company opened its 20th location in 1983. This wasn't the only improvement that the firm enjoyed in the 80s. The company added more meals to its menu. In 1985, the business began to make the Italian Runza sandwich. 
However, it discontinued it later on. This wouldn't be the only addition the company would make to its menu. More came later. The restaurant continued its slow expansion, but this time it was faster compared to how business operated before. By 1987, the firm already had 40 stores and increased the food items it served to its customers. The restaurant introduced the grilled chicken sandwich to its teeming customers. Sally Everett, the co-founder of the restaurant, died in 1989 when she was 73. Her death didn't disturb the company's operations, with Donald continuing to manage the business with great skill as he always had. After its 40th anniversary, the company began to feel adventurous. It opened another store in downtown Lincoln named The Rock and Roll Runza. This new restaurant went completely old school to the restaurant's early days as a drive-in store. It incorporated elements like servers on skates, and the decor had a diner feel. Also, the chain decided it was time for an expansion outside of Nebraska, and chose to open its first international branch in Latvia, which was in the Soviet Union at the time. It was a risky move, but company executives greenlit the expansion. They began to negotiate with Latvia's restaurant and sent 200 frozen sandwiches to the Soviet Ministry of Agriculture as part of the negotiations. However, everything crashed when the Soviet government invaded Latvia to prevent it from leaving the Soviet Union. The restaurant chain also tried its expansion out of Nebraska in other American states. There were stores in a mall food court in Moline and fashion show malls food court in the Las Vegas Strip. However, the restaurant failed to replicate the influence it had in Nebraska and had to close all the stores outside of Nebraska within a few years of opening them. Runza continued to explore ways to make its restaurants friendly to its customers. So it created an ad campaign featuring Grandma Runza and introduced a kiddies meal into its menu. Business was good, and the restaurant continued to record progress. This didn't go unnoticed, with Donald becoming the state restaurateur of the year in 1994. However, after diligently serving the company for years, Donald left, and his son Donald Jr. replaced him as the president. Donald Jr. continued his father's slow expansion philosophy and sought more ways to perpetuate the company as a Nebraskan brand. Under his leadership, the business became an official partner of the athletics team of the University of Nebraska. However, the new president understood that not everything could remain the same. The Runza logo got changed, and the menu saw significant expansion. The menu saw the addition of a cheeseburger, BLT, barbecue bacon, teriyaki, buffalo chicken sandwich, southwestern, ice cream, and cookies, too. The company also created Frings, a combination of onion rings and fries. The new president also changed the uniform that the employees wore to burgundy before eventually settling for green in 2012. The brand has managed itself well and prevented any major loss. But in 2018, the restaurant got beaten on its home turf by Chick-fil-A and Steak and Shake. Runza had a store in the Nebraska Union, which was the student union body of the University of Nebraska, and had been using the store since 2008. For 10 years, the restaurant operated from there, but it didn't know that its competitors eyed the location and wanted to make it their own. Steak and Shake and Chick-fil-A knew they stood no chance against the brand individually, but combined, they could kick Runza from the store. And that's what they did. They outbid Runza and took over the location. Nebraskans fumed at what looked like a betrayal of their beloved fast food joint, and there was a big public outcry. Nebraskans viewed the restaurant's sandwich as a Nebraskan dish that should be served at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. But there was nothing anyone could do. That location was lost. It's not as if the chain would feel the loss of the location too much, considering its menu and how it continued to keep things fresh for customers. In 2007, the restaurant acquired Miller & Payne's cinnamon rolls recipe and improved it. Then they served the rolls with a bowl of Runza's homemade chili. With a meal like that, it's no surprise that the restaurant opened its 80th store and opened six more later on to bring the total stores to 86. Eighty of those stores are in Nebraska, with Iowa, Kansas, and Colorado having the remaining stores. But the restaurant chain remains ambitious. It is looking at creating more stores in Nebraska and slowly expanding in Iowa, Kansas, and Colorado. Honestly, Runza doesn't have an interesting history compared to some of the other stores we've covered on our channel. There aren't any family feuds or takeovers. Still, that is impressive considering that they managed to remain a family in the face of success. Also, they have refused to sell their business. But we have to ask, do you agree with their slow expansion or do you think Runza needs to do more?
Let us know in the comments and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to support our channel.